Hello everyone, this is Fun Police, and we're back for the second part of the Legion review. Uh, today, we're or t for this video, we're going to be looking at the British cards of the expansion. Uh, they got a lot of good stuff, but before we do that, I promised last time we'd open another officer pack, so let's open it up and see what we get. Oh, well, we got a Golden German Limited and an Italian Special, but otherwise... Still not that much, which is a bit disappointing. Although, 104th Panzer Grenadier, I like that card a lot, so, you know, definitely still kind of a weak card. Let's hope the last pack we open in the next video is going to be a Elite. That will be exciting. But, beyond that, let's go to the Legion British cards. So we got a lot more cards due to the Exile. Uh, for this video, the Exile, we're going to be assuming that we use these in British decks rather than in Polish decks, as I think those, will, those can have different effects on the card. Without further ado, let's start with the first card, the 5th Parachute Brigade. It is a British infantry that costs zero credits, operates for one, and is a 1-1 one -one with the keyword Mobilize. Uh, we've talked about this card before, uh, and essentially I see this as a really good mobilized card, uh, namely with the French Potez 63.11. Uh, that is potentially free card draw for each of these that you play with the Potez. Uh, that is potentially quite the powerful turn. On top of that, you're also able to just put these out, turn one alongside like a one drop mobilize, and that can be a lot of pressure very quickly. Uh, I think this is going to be an excellent addition to the mobilize deck, uh, and just be an overall solid card. Outside of that, I don't see much use for it. Maybe if there's some sort of aggressive deck, just having more stuff to uh, flood the board quickly would be effective, but... I don't have the greatest confidence that we're going to see some sort of aggressive Britain deck still. I don't think the tools are there. But maybe. Maybe there is something I'm missing. But obviously Mobilize uh, lo probably loves this card. Against the Odds. Against the Odds is a, another zero credit card. This time a countermeasure. And it has the text, when a unit attacks, pin it after combat and draw a card. So this means that any time that the next unit the enemy attacks with will be pinned for their next turn, and they also you also get to draw a card. Against the odds, I think it's potentially very powerful. Uh, it is essentially free draw after the enemy attacks with it. Uh, so that is potentially extremely powerful. Uh, and that alone, zero credit to draw a card... Because the condition's not hard to meet. It's very easy to activate against the odds because the enemy is going to eventually attack and it costs you nothing to use against the odds. On top of that, the pin itself is quite useful as the pin will be will always be active on your turn, so any pin synergy you have is useful and it makes sure that the enemy's not using that unit the next turn. Uh, so, I think Against the Odds is a pretty sh strong card. I think the only issue with it is the question of what to remove for it. Because it is granted kind of low impact. And in certain matchups, I could definitely see this just not having that much of an effect. Uh, especially with decks that have a lot of cheap units, so pinning one isn't that effective. Or in decks that are, you know, doing something... Uh, against it I it's definitely I think a good card but it's but where does it go you know I think maybe if you wanted to run a German British countermeasure deck this is a good option uh, we talked about lost, lost convoy last time which was a German zero credit countermeasure and I think that against the odds fits well into that as the enemy wants to probably activate this which can buff up your 87 grenadiers and other things uh, but beyond that, it's hard to say. I guess we'll see where Against the Odds ends up and if it can pull enough power to push out other cards into from deck lists. Then we have Double Strength. It is a German spe or is a British special card. It is a one credit order. 
and it has the text, shuffle a copy of a random order in your hand into your deck. So this is our first look into a way to copy orders. And the condition is definitely quite high, but it is a way to get very powerful orders and get extra copies of them for cheap. Uh, but there's definitely a lot of work that goes into that. I think the first thing I thought of when I saw this card was how can we use it to copy research? As research is so overwhelming, you know, like you could do multiple Bletchley Parks or multiple carpet bombings. But there definitely is a high opportunity cost. Does that mean we're not going to run lower impact orders in order to make sure we're always hitting like our carpets and whatnot? And how much how much draw are we putting in in order to go f then find those extra carpets? It's definitely a big question. I think there's also the thing that if you have only two double strengths in hand, you are completely immune to fatigue as long as you just keep shuffling the other double strength into the deck. So that is potentially powerful, although it's hard to say because unlike, for example, like the Soviet infinite values like Night Witches, that isn't going to get you any value. So it only is an anti-fatigue uh, tool, but could be relevant in certain uh, matchups. Uh, otherwise, I also think this is probably good for commandos. Uh, commandos like cheap orders, uh, they have a lot of draw, and they probably don't care what order they're copying, uh, because most of their orders are going to be cheap and easy to play to proc the commandos. So you're being able to get extra cups of tea, or again, copying even something like the research, or for example, stuff like the carpet bombing can be quite useful in that deck. Uh, so I think this has a good chance of seeing play somewhere. I would say commandos is the most likely place, and Brit Control, if it is going to run it, either needs to probably only run one copy, because you just probably don't want to have too many of these. Uh, but yeah, there's potentially a very high ceiling for this card, but there's definitely a lot of work you got to put in to get that ceiling. Then we move on to Emergency Measures. Uh, that is a one credit standard order, standard rarity order, and it has the effect choose and discard a Spitfire to deal four damage to target unit and pin it. So that is a very high amount of damage. Uh, we've talked about this card before, and I think it's a good addition to Spitfire decks. Uh, Spitfire decks have the issue where they have these very awkward opening hands where they have all their Spitfires but yet nothing cheap to play. And Britain normally doesn't have very many cheap ways to, of removal. So I think emergency measures can fit well into that deck. I don't think it's going to really make that deck viable per se, but I do think that it is a good way to have a couple copies. Four damage is going to remove almost every early game threat uh, even into turn, even into most three and even some four drops. And the pin means that even if you don't kill the unit, the enemy's not going to be able to move it. So you could, like, for example, hit something big, pin it, and then next turn carpet bombing if you're going into the late game. Uh, so emergency measures is, I think, a nice card, uh, you know, but I don't think it's anything game shattering. Uh, the Spitfire archetype, I think, needs more than this in order to be viable but i think it's definitely a nice piece that if the spitfire deck ever does come together we'll see a copy or two of this in there next up resourcefulness so this is a one credit order also for britain and it is intel one for those as i never actually did a video over intel i have to explain what that is intel is essentially when you play the card it will reveal a certain amount of cards in the enemy hand. So for Intel 1, it will reveal one card in the enemy hand. And on your turn, at any time, you are able to view it. And that card remains viewable for the entirety of the match until the enemy either plays it or it gets somehow removed from the hand, such as shuffled back into the deck. Uh, and then also, so that's what Intel does. And then the other effect for resourcefulness is draw a random commando unit from your deck. So a commando unit refers to the cards that have the word commando in their name. 
Uh, probably the most infamous or the most known is the number 10 commando. The number 10 commando is the two credit smoke screen order that is able to deal one damage whenever you play an order. Uh, so that is probably the most commonly known commando, but we do have a handful of others. Uh, we have some other cheap ones alongside a couple expensive ones. Uh, here they are. We have like number one commando, which is that one three smoke screen, and it has kills any unit it damages. Uh, the number three commando, which units with five or more attack cannot attack. Or we even have the number 43 commando, which is essentially a big version of the number 10. So resourcefulness is able to get any one of these out of your deck. Any, a random copy of any of those. I think its best use is clearly with the number 10. Uh, it's a cheap order, uh, and a cheap order and works best at finding you the same copies of the number 10 commandos, as the commando decks that play those units really do want to have that. So resourcefulness, I think, really helps to make that consistent. Although I guess if you wanted some other, uh, some of the other commandos, this could be useful. Like, for example, maybe Resourcefulness and the number 10 Commandos could be a consistent early game package. Use Resourcefulness, you know, you run a copy of or two of Resourcefulness, and then you can tutor up those uh, numbered 1 Commandos and use those to kill off early enemy drops. Maybe there's something there. Not too confident in that, but it is an option. Uh, but I think clearly this is a very strong Commando card. Uh... You don't get to run an additional, like, this is, like, essentially, potentially another three copies of the commando cards in your deck, but you're not getting, like, six extra, three extra commandos, you're just being able to more consistently find them, and I think that's very useful for how cheap it is. Uh, I expect this to easily find room in commando decks, but outside of commando, eh, not seeing it. Next up, the first Gurkha Rifles. Uh, it is a 2-credit infantry, it operates for 1, it is a 1-4, and it has Fury and Deployment, gets plus 1 attack for each order you've given this turn. So this Gurkha Rifles is potentially quite powerful. Uh, the first thing I think is Commandos, as they play a lot of cheap orders, so this is very easy to get to like a 5-4 or a 6-4, uh, you know, in the mid-game while still being able to impact them with cheap orders as you play your other commandos. But I also think maybe there's room in some other decks for this. 1-4 is not the greatest stat line, but 2-4 ain't bad is actually pretty strong, and 3-4 is getting kind of insane. So you only need to play maybe one or two orders to get this to like a reasonably strong level. Uh, in particular, I think... It could be interesting to try out close air support with it, which means putting it in British air. That card is very likes buffs a lot, and Brit Air is often playing a handful of cheap orders, whether that's like air superiority, they have Monty usually, you know, they also have, you know, obviously the close air supports. So the Gurkha Rifles offers potentially a very strong uh, candidate for it for buffs while also being pretty easy to come down uh, as a pretty big unit early on so I think that's an interesting thought uh, I don't know how in practice it'll perform I wouldn't expect much from it but it's something to maybe consider in the deck list at least next up Agency Africa so Agency Africa is a two credits special order and it has Exile. Now, Exile was the card we looked at last time, and that essentially means that any deck with with either Britain or Poland are able to use this card. And then it also has Intel 3, and then the text, add to hand a copy of a random known card in the enemy hand. So the known card in the enemy hand essentially comes from the Intel. Uh, this is a card that is meant to work within the Intel archetype, which we will talk about more in depth with the Poland if we're running this card as a solo card, we are essentially we are essentially just taking a card out of the enemy hand and putting it in ours. That is its effect, and we get to see some of theirs hands. Not the strongest thing, I don't think, due to the randomness, but 
there is the potential in certain control mirrors to potentially steal some high impact cards. So I don't think it'll find a slot in any serious deck, but if you're if the meta really is committing to very grindy and long matchups, maybe Agency Africa's there as a way to copy otherwise impactful cards and let you double up on them, you know? Like, for example, stealing certain elites that otherwise you'd only have one copy of, or getting an extra, you know, board clear, or some other big expensive card. While still also getting to see a little bit of the hand. I don't think that is going to really come up. I think the meta is not going to be that slow. So I don't think this card will probably see much play outside of, like, for fun decks, but it is interesting. Next up, the RAF Buffalo Mark I. It is a 2 credit plane, it operates for 2 credits, it is a 2-3 fighter, and it get, and has the text, gets plus 1 plus 1 when it survives combat. So the survives combat, for reference, is, oh, it actually is, says it right there. Combat is counted as unit to unit fighting regardless of damage inflicted, attacking the HQ does not count as combat. So that is useful, uh, a useful tool tip, and I think sums it up quite well. Uh, so. We have to be fighting other units, but I think the Buffalo is potentially quite, is an interesting card. I think that two operation cost is a big hit against it. Uh, that's just slow. Like, it's a slow card, but it does grow as a fighter. And if we look at the plus one, plus one, like a form of healing, this is kind of a two credit, two, three with heavy armor one that slowly grows in attack. So this is able to, for example, fight off enemy one like one attack units and only take one damage so that's actually a pretty tough unit if the enemy is trying to trade into it uh meaning they have to probably spend some pretty high attack units or something in order to kill it before it really gets growing but yeah that two operation cost is quite expensive maybe because it's a decent enough two drop fighter that british air will want to run it uh you know, just to have some extra bodies to use with close air support and whatnot. Maybe that's where it finds a home. But otherwise, I'm having trouble seeing a home for it. As I keep saying, that operation cost is just quite high for its body and its effect. It's not the worst thing in the world, but I also don't think there is a lot of hope for it if Brit Air doesn't want it. Now we move on to the next card, Timely Supplies. It is a two credit order, and it has the text, draw a card, it costs two less this turn. So the first thing I think it comes up is Commandos. Uh, commandos play a lot of super cheap cards. They also enjoy drawing cards, and that discount, because their cards are also cheap, uh, this is able to essentially be a zero credit draw a card. Uh, which Commandos really enjoys. Commandos loves cheap orders, cheap to free orders. Being able to play this and then play another order essentially allows you to play two orders for one, which Commandos just absolutely adores. This also, I think, could maybe be an interesting card in some sort of aggressive British deck. It's hard to say what aggressive British deck, but if your deck only consists of like one, two, and three credit cards, Timely Supplies could be, you know, essentially, like the Commando deck, a free card draw, which could maybe add consistency as you're able to play this, draw your two credit unit, play it out real quick, and then, uh, you know, use that and pressure the enemy while having fewer deck slots. Uh, you know, if you can make that work consistently, Timely Supplies might as well not even be there and be like a two credit, you know, and you're essentially removing four cards from your deck if you can do that consistently, which is, you know, potentially quite powerful. I don't see that becoming a relevant thing, but it could be something. Uh, but yeah, Timely Supplies, I think, is mostly a commando card. Maybe British Control also wants it. Because, but that's a bit difficult to say as it's harder to make the discount work if you draw an expensive card. But yeah, I think definitely a good for commandos. ATS. 
ATS is a four credit elite order and it has the text the enemy HQ gets if this HQ has taken three plus damage this turn you draw a card so this is a pretty sh this is an interesting card uh, it is potentially a lot of card draw and the enemy is not going to be able to really prevent you from drawing those cards but four credits to do nothing is quite expensive. Uh, my thoughts are something like British Air. Uh, British Air has a lot of bombers which can go around guards and whatnot, making it easier to get that three damage on the HQ in a turn. Uh, and they have buffs to also make those bombers do three damage on their own. So ATS, I think, might have a home there. Uh... It's also important to note that orders can activate this. It doesn't have to be that. So maybe there's another deck I'm missing. Uh, you know, like maybe there's like a burn deck that I'm missing that would run ATS. Like British German countermeasures. And you use like air blitz or like uh, the various cards like daylight bombing and similar effects. And you just get some extra draw in there, you know. Because the ATS, you got to draw about three cards with it to be good. You know, that's probably about the minimum. You know, otherwise, it's essentially a more expensive convoy that you're working for. Uh, but it has the potential to be much higher. But, you know, like, Air Blitz being able to draw a card on top of it is potentially quite powerful. So, maybe this inspires some new, like, uh, burn control deck? maybe maybe with the countermeasures and propaganda if propaganda is drawing a card each time you play it you know that makes it a lot easier to play those cards i'm having trouble seeing that as an actual deck but ats i think has a really strong effect and we'll just have to see where it ends up and ends up in uh as it's potentially quite useful next up is another exile card the battle mark one Poland. It is a 4 credit, 2 operation cost bomber, has exile, it is a 1-1, one, one, but the first order you give each turn also gives your units plus 1, plus 1, and that does count the battle mark 1. Uh, so this card is potentially really strong uh, because it is a permanently scaling thing in a deck. Being able to give all your units plus 1, plus 1 can very quickly snowball out of control, especially if you're playing like orders. Uh, the sad thing to note is that this is a British card for all extents and purposes, so it won't be buffed with something like Cup of Tea, which is a bit sad, you know, and its high cost definitely makes it difficult to use, but in the mid game, uh, you know, if you can play this down and it survives for a turn, which the enemy will try their hardest to kill it. But if it survives, it very quickly starts going off. You know, give your entire board plus two, plus two, while just having to play orders. That's quite powerful. Uh, so I think it's hard to say. Uh, Commandos has a lot of stuff coming in this set. And I don't know if the Battle Mark I is going to be strong enough to compete it. But making your Commandos tougher is something they appreciate. So maybe this is there. You know, and also it's like buffing your guards in a commando deck and whatnot. So, you know, you can tuck this behind a guard and buff it. And the enemy, if they don't remove it, you know, even if they remove it, you got some value out of it. So, it's hard to say. I would, ha if I have to say, I don't think, I think it's a bit too expensive to make work. Uh, overall, but I think that it's not unreasonable either. But I think that Commandos will have will run out of core slots before they put this in. M3 Grant. One of the first cards we saw from the Legion expansion. It is a 4 credit, 2 operation cost tank. It is a 2-5. And it has guard and deployment gets plus 2, plus 2 if your HQ has 25 or more defense. So this Grant, uh, I think overall the M3 Grant is a variation to the Seaforth Highlanders. I think Highlanders are more consistent, but the Grant is much better at attacking the enemy after it is useful as a guard. But that condition can be quite difficult to achieve, uh, especially since we've just seen that Mare Nostrum got some nerfs to it. 
uh, it's a lot harder to get the 25 defense quickly. So I guess we'll see. I could maybe see one or two copies of the Grant working its way into a handful of decks. Uh, I think Mobilize may want this. Alongside Potez and their very quick and efficient healing in, with the Potez, the Grant could be quite interesting. Uh, or maybe in some sort of Italian deck with still with Mer Nostrum. You know, you play it, heal up, and then in the mid game you got a 4 7 guard tank. Could be quite efficient. The tank is quite hard to like bounce, you know, like unlike a lot of guards that are infantry based. Uh, grants are the grant is a tank meaning that certain bounce effects like for example the m16 half check from us isn't able to hit it which could be a beneficial effect uh, next up the barracuda it is a five credit two operation cost bomber it is a special it is a two three and it has the effect deployment deal two damage to an enemy if the enemy is a unit pin it so this effect is able to go face similar to cards like Daylight Bombing and other similar effects. It is essentially a bigger Albacore. And we've seen that Albacore does see you constant play in a variety of British decks. The Barracuda being bigger, though, makes it a bit harder to say if it's going to be uh, as used. But I think it is a very reasonable card to include in decks. Uh, you know, deal two damage to a unit and pin it isn't a bad effect, you know. Uh, I could see it as, like, for example, alongside, like, Sexton and Shelling, you know, as a five-credit way to impact the board, put something out there, and pin stuff in overall stall. But it does have the usefulness over those cards of being able to add a bit of burn in the late game. Uh, you know, being able to just deal two damage to the face, you know, combine that with, like, Daylight Bombing, and that's... 8 damage from British cards that are also able to do other effects. So, I think the Barracuda is quite flexible. I guess we'll see, but if I have to say, I think it's a reasonable card to go into British control. Uh, we'll just have to see if the room is there. Now, that's probably the only thing, is that the room may not be there for the Barracuda to squeeze its way in. Uh, but I think it's not a bad card, by any means. Then we have the other British Elite... The Bu Fighter TF Mark 10. It is a 6 credit, 2 operation cost bomber. It is a 4 4, and it has the text any unit that attacks this unit takes 3 damage first. So essentially, this is kind of a fighter with ambush and also a bomber. Any unit with 3 or less health literally is not going to be able to attack into this card, as it has ambush 3 essentially, or ambush with 3 attack essentially. Uh, so little cards aren't going to be able to attack into it, and any unit that does attack into it will take 3 damage, ignoring any heavy armor, because this is an effect. Uh, it's hard to say, uh, because it is quite weak to orders, so it's potentially very strong on the board when it gets down, because it can be hard to attack into, but at the same time, you can just use like many different orders to kill this. I'd say overall, right now, it might end up a bit too weak to work its way into decks. It's a bit, it's kind, it's slow and a bit vulnerable to orders, uh, but that effect could be quite powerful if the right of meta evolves. But I think it's going to fall a little short right now. And then the final card, the Spitfire Mark V Poland. It is the sick. It is a six credit, two operation cost fighter. It is a five six with the word exile. It is a British exile, and it has deployment, give a friendly infantry, plus one, plus one in guard. So I think that of most of the exile cards, this actually works best in Britain, as it is a Spitfire. And you are going to want to play Spitfires with the various Spitfire synergies. Uh, currently, the other Spitfire Mark V, which is just a 6-6 six, six one, I think is overall worse than this version. Uh, being able to give a unit plus one, plus one in guard means that this card, ha this Spitfire has a bit more impact than other versions and I think overall that makes it uh, more impactful and overall more useful uh, otherwise it still is just a big Spitfire to play out and something to use with uh, the British uh, emergency measures and RAF ground crew and all that so I think and outside of that I don't think this card will see play uh, there's just better things to be doing but that is the British cards uh, I think overall, 
Britain has a lot going for their commandos archetype. Uh, stuff like emergent or stuff like double strength, resourcefulness, first Gurkha guards, timely supplies, even battle the battle mark one. I think all that fits into a commando deck. Uh, we also saw some interesting uh, British air cards, namely the Buffalo and the ATS could both be competent, and even the Barracuda maybe could be all three strong additions to the deck. We'll have to wait and see. Then we also got some odds and ends. You know, we had like the Grant, which could maybe fit into Control, or the Fifth Parachute, which goes into the Mobilized deck. So I think Britain... I think overall, the biggest improvement is two Commandos. Uh, that is just... That got the most support. And I think it's definitely going to jump in power level. So get ready to see Commandos a lot more, in my opinion. Uh... It may not be a top tier deck, but it's definitely going to become a more serious threat you're going to have to respect more. Beyond that, uh, that is the video for now. A uh, bit of a longer one due to those extra exile cards. Uh, but next, the next video is going to be looking at the Soviet cards, the ones I'm actually most, what some of the most excited for. Uh, so we'll do that. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, co leave a comment, and especially subscribe. Uh, we're going to see probably more, you know, we're going to see a lot more videos quite quickly for the next couple, or for today. Uh, and I'm excited for Legions. So I want to thank everybody for watching, and have a good day.